Yeah, so in 1982, I went to the island of Maui in Hawaii uh, to visit my friend Mike for the summer. Mike had a house over there and invited me to come and spend a few weeks. And uh, I told my mom and dad I'd be back in the fall. This was about June, maybe July. And uh, I was just going to go over for a few weeks. And, uh, and uh, I wound up calling him up uh, in... Uh, sort of late August and saying well I'm just gonna stay here in Maui and, and I wound up staying there almost a whole year and uh, and it was just a, a fun time and I worked as a gardener and a cook and surfed a lot and chased a lot of girls and just had a super good time and uh, and I knew of another guy from high school who had a, a business. He worked for his uncle in, on the island of Kauai. And I'd always wanted to go over there and see the Nepali coastline. And, uh, and so um, a, a girlfriend of mine told me he lived over there. And, and right before I was going to go home to Texas, uh, I decided to fly over to Kauai. And, and surprise him because I kind of knew him but not really good but I flew over there and uh, and found him his name was George and uh, George was thrilled to see me and see anybody from Texas and uh, and so um, we, we hit it off and and uh, I started working for his uncle's company which was called Kauai Supply and I drove a, a delivery truck uh, all over uh, Kauai to uh, people like George Harrison was building a house there. I delivered some uh, sheetrock and joint compound there and Jim Neighbors was building a project there and uh, so I never got to meet any of those people but they had cool property that they were building and uh, so uh, I was there for about three months and we had a great time and and uh, and it was uh, a day or two before Thanksgiving. I think it was the day before Thanksgiving in 1982. And it was uh, about three in the afternoon and I was living with George in this condo by the water and, uh, and the civil defense started uh, sounding off telling everyone that a hurricane was coming. And, uh, and uh, it, it was apparently this hurricane had been coming from uh, Japan going across the Pacific Ocean south of uh, the Hawaiian Islands and just abruptly took a sharp left-hand turn and started coming north straight for the island of Kauai where we were living and uh, everybody was scrambling to try to find shelter and we went running back to our condo and the civil defense people told us that we couldn't live there. We couldn't stay in our own place because it was right on the water and nobody could stay on the water during a hurricane. And uh, so we, we're just like, well, what do, we, what do we do? Where do we go? And they said, we don't know. You've got 10 minutes to go inside, get whatever you need and take off because it's not safe here. And uh, so we're just like shocked, you know, and, and we were going to go to George's warehouse down in Kapaha, but it was really close to the water too. It had, uh, it was a, a big, uh, you know, roll down doors and uh, we were going to go inside there, but they said, no, don't go there either. So we wound up going up country up to uh, one of the employees that worked in George's warehouse uh, was a guy named Joe uh, Priggy and Joe and his wife, um, I want to say her name was Melinda, uh, but but it was uh, an unusual. She was an Oriental gal. Joe was a local Hawaiian, and uh, and they uh, invited us to come and stay up at their house, and it was nothing more than a a two room uh, corrugated tin shack. I'm telling you, it was the simplest little house, and uh, we went up there just about as the storm started coming in, and it came in. With, with a bang, you know, and it was called Hurricane Eva, spelled I-W-A, Ewa, but uh, pronounced Hurricane Eva. And, uh, and we hunkered down at Joe's house. His, his wife, Miriam was her name. That's what it was, Miriam, and uh, Joe and Miriam. And, uh, and they started serving us uh, Japanese sushi and sake and, uh, and, and Kirin beer. And we, we proceeded to just get hammered. You know, because we figured if the hurricane was going to get us, we'd at least be anesthetized, you know. And uh, so uh, uh, Miriam just took good care of us. And and, uh, and, and Joe was a pure-blood Hawaiian uh, guy. And he actually uh, uh, claims to have come 
uh, to the Hawaiian Islands, his ancestors on, on the great war canoes that came from Polynesia, and his, his lineage traced all the way back. He believed in Madame Pele, the fire goddess of the island, which was connected to the volcanoes, and he made reference to Madame Pele all night long, and how she was going to protect us, and, and so forth. Miriam, every time the wind blew, she was calling out to Jesus, and uh, so we were in a sort of a mixed spiritual household, and uh, but this this thing blew in, and, and there were many times we thought the house was going to blow down. We had the mattresses off the bed, and we were hiding under the, uh, you know, uh, uh, underneath them, thinking the house was going to fall in at any moment. And uh, and then, you know, uh, about an hour and a half into it, everything stopped, and it was real quiet. And we thought the, the storm was over. And uh, we kind of came out from under our mattresses and, uh, and, and crept out a little bit, looked out the front door. And all of a sudden, you could, you could see it was this eerie silence. You could hear birds chirping, even at night, which is unusual. And uh, you could hear uh, uh, sort of jungle sounds out there. And uh, then all of a sudden, you hear this crashing, and bang, it comes again. And we had been right in the eye of the storm. I've actually been in the middle of that. Very weird feeling. And, uh, and so um, uh, for another good hour and a half, two hours, that storm just slammed the island. You could hear trees breaking. I would say the second half of the storm was even worse. And uh, uh, trees snapping all around, pieces of trees and other buildings hitting the house. But uh, miraculously, our, we didn't lose the roof and we didn't lose the house, but it just shook just like uh, it was just a, a tin shack, <laughs> which it was. And, uh, and so... Uh, we, we, when it finally stopped, we all just sort of settled down and went to sleep. And when we woke up at first light the next morning, I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, it was just total devastation everywhere. And uh, there, were, there were just trees down everywhere. We, we had to climb out the windows of the house just to get out of it and, and clear the front doorway. And fortunately, Joe had a big chainsaw and a bunch of gasoline. And we had to uh, cut our way down the road and, and, and pull trees off of the road. We had a whole line of cars behind us just waiting for us to, to um, get through. And, uh, and, and we cut our way all the way back down to town. And what we found down there was incredible. There was no power, no water, no uh, uh, telephone, you know, no communications. They eventually, uh, they had to uh, pull a submarine up to Nuili Wheelie Harbor to bring the island power and, and uh, uh, some basic uh, uh, water desalinization uh, because it uh, didn't have any fresh water on the island. And uh, except in the stores, and now this is Thanksgiving Day, you know, and uh, as the uh, all the electricity's gone, all the freezers are gone, and so all the meat is uh, coming out of the freezers now, and uh, being cooked uh, for the next few days. Uh, the people are taking their their meat out of the freezers and all their stuff, and they're just giving it away to everybody. And uh, and uh, it was just such a a celebration of life. There wasn't one person killed. I did a. a uh, I became a, a Red Cross volunteer and served food in the the uh, uh, emergency shelter that was made in this elementary school, and um, and I met these guys from New Zealand who were wanting to sail back to New Zealand, but I went down to the harbor. Uh, to see their boat, see how it fared during the storm, and all we could see was the mast sticking out of the water. It was terrible, uh, and uh, uh, they were just heartbroken. Now they were having to wait until insurance paid off, whenever that might be, and uh, and uh, it was just really quite something to see Mother Nature at what is just about the most ferocious you can imagine. Uh, and uh, we went down the airport, and the planes were just you know, scattered all over the place like, like like little toys. And there's a place called they call the Tunnel of uh, Trees, and it was just all broken and thrown around. And uh, there was a hotel down in Poipu Beach, I believe it was uh, a Marriott. Uh, uh, and uh, it was the whole hotel was lifted up and moved three feet. Uh, uh, the 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 first two or three floors of the hotel, the ocean just blew through there, swept every stick of furniture out of it. 
and um, and uh, we went to the warehouse that we thought we might stay in that night and uh, and, 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 and what we were told was if we had uh, l uh, left the doors, the big roll down doors open about a foot or two, it would have had ventilation and, and not been destroyed. But as it was, we closed it up real tight when we left. And all four of these two story roll down doors had just blown in in one massive gust. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and they were all tangled in the middle of the room. And when it did, the roof, a big heavy beam roof, flew off and uh, flew into the backyard and half of it fell down and hit all that joint compound and sheetrock and just you know just just destroyed everything it was just one big you know oozy mess when we got there with all that rain and joint compound and oh god and so we were out of business and um and I, I hung around for a week or two, helped with the cleanup, and, and it was my first real look at a disaster situation. And, uh, and after that, uh, I went back to Maui for a little while and then flew back to Texas. But uh, Hurricane Eva, 1982.